Hi guys, I'm Tracy Ward and this is my podcast. Welcome. Hi guys, um, today I was going to have a quick little chat about the past week I've had food wise. Not been brilliant, I have to say. Didn't help by the fact that my daughter's 18th um, needed celebrating on Wednesday, so that went completely off track. Um, cake, cocktails, dinners, everything else. But I don't know, um, I don't think this is just exclusively to me. I think probably a lot of people find this. The more these kind of incidents happen, um, but that we allow ourselves to have and that's fine you know because life it, it goes on doesn't it but I think the more that you have the harder you find it just to get yourself back on track now I've managed to do this because I did struggle after Wednesday I've managed to do this be- because I watched um, a documentary on Netflix about fasting and it kind of made sense to me quite a bit so I'd like to share with you what I am going to be doing and what I started doing from yesterday um, alongside the Exante products. Now I've downloaded myself a little app and it is called, let me find it, Fast Habit. Um, It's a blue icon with FH in white letters in the middle of it if you you want to have a look for it, completely free. Basically it's a countdown, it's a timer, but I'll talk about that more at the end of what I'm going to talk to you about now. So for people that I mean, fat people know what fasting is, but there's different types of fasting. So I'm going to kind of talk about the definition of fasting and different types of fasting that, that there are. Um, because, you know, they all don't suit everybody, do they? It's definition of fasting. What makes it so novel is that with all diet advice out there, the easiest might be simply to not eat. Of course, fasting isn't the same as starving yourself. I mean, we're not talking about you having no food whatsoever for days on end. And it's not a diet either. It's just um, the literal definition of fasting is to abstain from food and drink from a specific period of time. And it's this has been around for thousands of years, um, both as a spiritual fasting, part of many religions, but it's also it's a change in eating patterns. And that's the way I like to have a look at it. Um, In place of three square meals a day or a handful of smaller meals throughout the day, you'll have a specific window of time um, when you're eating. So obviously the rest of that 24-hour period is the fasting period. Whether you do this for a few hours a day or certain days of the week, like with the 5-2, as I say, again, there's different ways to do this. During the time frame that you eat, um, now you could say that you can eat whatever you want, but I've got to say and emphasise that has got to be within reason. You cannot sit there eating all the processed foods around and then fill up the last bit of space with crisps and chocolate because you're not going to reap any benefit from that at all um, and it's going to make you ill. So what you need to do is examine your diet before you try a fast. Now, the diet I'm on at the moment with the Exante is absolutely fine because it's not going to be forever. It's just until I get to the right BMI level or the, the weight goal that I'm off. But if you practice fasting and stick to a mostly whole food diet, um, which is rich in fruit, vegetables, lean proteins, healthy fats, raw dairy. But obviously, if you're um, looking at keto diets and trying to get into ketosis don't go for the high carb versions of these so like with the fruits you don't want to be eating all the apples and the like the tropical fruits you want to be eating um berries um and fruit like that and also there's a common thing like with the vegetables the vegetables that grow under the ground tend to be higher in carbs than the vegetables that grow above so try and have more of the the um vegetables that grow above the ground so things like your broccoli your cabbage your cauliflowers all those kinds of things you can have the occasional splurge on chocolate or cheese it won't it's not gonna have a big impact but you know you don't again you just don't go overboard with that there isn't one right way to do this either uh there are several types that are popular and so that's what i'm going to talk to you about now the different types of fasting intermittent fasting that's the um first thing i want to talk about it's also known as cyclic fasting but it's a catch-all phrase really for eating and not eating as well intermittently so Almost all of the fasting methods um, I want to talk about are 
types of intermittent fasting basically um, and typical intermittent fast times range from anything from 14 hours to 18 hours uh, the longest period any one of these plans would require you to abstain from solid food would be about 32 32 to 36 hours but i think personally i think that's a bit extreme i think the 14 to 18 hours is, is really good and that's what i did yesterday um and i'll talk about that in a bit later so time restricted eating if you practice time restricted eating um you'll abstain from food for anywhere between 12 to 16 hours and during that eating window you can eat as much of your favorite healthy foods as you'd like this is the one of the most common methods of fasting. Time restricted eating is pretty simple to implement. So if you finish dinner at 7 p.m. as an example, you won't eat anything again until at least 7 a.m. the following morning. If you wanted to take it further, you'd extend that kind of no eating time until about 11 a.m. or midday. Um, because you're sleeping as well for a large chunk of that no eating time, this is a really good way to introduce fasting into your lifestyle and experiment without any major changes. Now for the 16-8 fasting, um, which is basically another name for time restricted eating. Here you'll fast for the 16 hours a day and then eat the other eight, which is what I've been doing. The other type of fasting um, we have is alternate day fasting. As you're severely restricting the amount of calories you eat during the fasting days and then eat into your stomach's content on non-fasting days. Food isn't completely off the table, but you'll stick to about 25% of your normal caloric intake. Someone eating 2,000 calories would cut back to 500, for example. Alternate day fasting isn't necessarily a long-term plan because it can become difficult to stick to, but it can be helpful to get a healthy habit in motion. Um, this leads me to the 5-2 diet, and a lot of people have heard about the 5-2 diet, and it does seem to be very popular. Um, it's very similar to alternate day fasting, except here you eat normally for five days of the week, and then on the other two days, calories are restricted to about 500 or 600 calories a day, which would be your three products, basically, from Exante. The other one I'd not heard of, and this is the Warrior Diet, and here you, you stick to fruits and vegetables during the day, and then eat a well-rounded, larger meal during the evenings. And another one I'd never heard of as well was called the Daniel Fast. Now this is a type of a kind of a, a spiritual fasting and it's based off of Daniel's experiences in the Bible's book of Daniel, the Daniel Fast. Um, and it's a partial fast where vegetables, fruits and other healthy foods are featured prominently, but uh, meat, dairy, grains and drinks like coffee, alcohol and juice are avoided. Um, most people follow this one for probably 21 days in order to experience that kind of spiritual breakthrough, have more time to reflect on the relationship with God or just feel close to what Daniel would have experienced in his time. Personally, I'm not um, a religious person, so that one doesn't appeal to me, not just because it's religious, I just don't like the, the I don't know, it, it just doesn't um, ring true to me, that one, but you know, it's whatever's best for you. So, what is fasting? Abstaining from food and drink from a specific period of time and as I've said spiritual fasting is a part of many religions increasingly um, and it's become popular as part of health regimes to detox lose weight and all those kinds of things now I think the probably the better ones um, from my point of view I mean I'm not an expert on these things as the intermittent fasting the cyclic fasting range from 14 to 18 hours and the time restricted eating the where you abstain from food for anywhere between 12 to 16 hours and as I said that's what I did yesterday and I found it absolutely fantastic because I've got this little app as I said and it's called fast habit and it has a little timer on now it is so simple to use uh, if I'm doing it it's got to be simple believe me you just click when you're ready to start your fast um, you just click start fast and that's it and then it just starts a countdown so you can see how long you've been fasting how long you've got left to fast and it's got a time for when you can start eating and that helped me enormously last night because I started probably about it was just before 6 p.m and I thought right I'm going to do this so I clicked the start button and every time I felt hungry I picked it up and looked at it and it would say something like um you know you've done two hours 35 minutes so far fasting um, and it, it gave you a percentage of um, how far you were through your time period and what time you can eat and all these kind of things. And it kind of um, motivated me a lot more um, to stick to it. Whereas normally I'd probably gone in for another uh, meal replacement bar or, you know, handful of nuts or something like that. But I didn't. And I actually stuck to it. And I didn't start eating until I was allowed to. 
and it's worked pretty well for me today i mean i've got i've had my three products so i've got another one left and um i probably will have some berries as well to be fair but it is only 2 30 and i'm kind of i feel as if i'm winding myself down ready for that kind of 6 p.m moment where i'm not going to be eating and um it, it doesn't worry me to be honest um before when I was having the four products, I'd think, oh God, I've only got one more left. Oh God, try and make it last as poss long as possible. But it's almost like now, I'm almost kind of looking forward to 6 p.m. So I can click my button, start fast, and just get myself ready for the next day. So I don't know, it's worth giving it a go. It's for me, something clicked in my head yesterday when I started doing this and after I watched the documentary. Um, Unfortunately, I can't remember what the name of the documentary is, but I'll uh, I'll find out and I'll put it in the blog for you. But I think it is something for you to um to consider. And I know on the Exante they have kind of a five two diet thing going on on there, don't they? Where you can have healthy for five days of the week and then your three products for the other two days. And I think you can kind of time the fasting period around your lifestyle, really. So I mean, if you're and also exercise and things like that. I don't think you should really be exercising a great deal when you... It depends on how much you're fasting and everything. Um, but they say that as well on the Exante thing. If When you're only on the total solution, you're only on three products a day, you shouldn't be exercising. Just gentle exercise, so like a gentle walk, something like that. You should not be beating the hell out of a cross train or a treadmill. You know, you've got to be sensible with this. And you've seriously got to keep your fluids up because that is really important. You do not want to get dehydrated because you're not getting um, fluids from the extra food. So you need to get it from drinks, from water. So how to fast, right? Four steps here we've got. You ready to try this? So here we go, I'm gonna try and make it easier for you. So number one, decide what type of fast you're going to do. I recommend really easing in with time-restricted eating. So starting with 12 hours of fasting, um, if that feels good after a few days, increase it to 14 hours and probably up to a maximum of 18. I wouldn't recommend going faster than that, really. Also, have you fasted before? Um, if so, then you might want to try a more ambitious fast, like alternate alternate day fasting. Um, but as I say, I mean, that's, that's up to you. Number one, really, is to decide which type of fast you're going to do and then to stick to it. Number two set yourself some goals i've always said this with any kind of dieting and i've said it all the way through this process but with this as well you've got to set some goals what do you want to accomplish by fasting is it losing weight do you want to be healthier do you want to feel better do you want to have more energy write all these things down um, and put it in a place where you'll see it frequently during your fast now if you've got um one of my diet journal books which you can get on amazon there's a little note section there. This is something that you could put in there. So you could keep that with you all the time. Keep, a, you know, you know what your goals are. Right, number three, for those guys that aren't on um, the Exante, make a menu and stock the fridge. Before beginning your fast, decide what, when you're eating and what you'll be eating then. Knowing this in advance takes the pressure off. It really does. Especially if you feel like you may eat everything in sight, which I'm also a bit like, because you can. But obviously we can't now. Um, as you become more used to fasting, you might find it's um, unnecessary to sort out meals beforehand. But I find having a range of healthy food waiting for you in the fridge makes fasting a lot easier. But as I say, um, this is for people not on the Exxon diet meal replacements. I'm, I'm going to stick to those diet meal replacements. So this is the menu and stock the fridge up is for people not on them. There we go. I hope that makes sense. A bit of waffle there going on. Right. So number four really important you need to listen to your body fasting can take some time to get used to because your body sheds old habits and learns new ones but listen to your body really important if you're in hour 10 of 16 of fasting and feel like you absolutely need a snack then just have one you know if your fasting time is up but you're not hungry yet wait until you are you know it's, it's not set in stone if you think you can push it another hour, push it another hour. There's no hard and fast rules here. You're not messing up at all by doing this. You might find it helpful um, to jot down a sentence or two each day about how you felt. Again, you can do that in the in the food plan that I've made. Um, you might find that certain times of the month or year, different types of fast work better for you. So you can change them around. Um, from what I can gather, these are going to be the common questions about fasting. It's like, how long should I fast? 
There's no concrete amount of time to fast. Although, as I said earlier, the typical intermittent fast ranges from 14 to 18 hours. Instead of focusing on how long you should fast for, I think it's better to keep a few things about fasting in mind instead. So if you're genuinely hungry, eat something. If you don't, you'll spend your time A, hungry, B, stressed about being hungry, and C, hungry and stressed, which is what I would call hangry, which is angry with an H. Now, if you're still in the early stages of eating better and choosing whole foods, perhaps wait some time before beginning a fasting routine so that it's not one more thing to worry about. Wait until you're at that comfortable stage. Concentrate on eating whole good for, good for your foods first and then when you're comfortable, start start the next stage with the fasting. Also, are you training for a big event? Are you going to a marathon or a triathlon? If you are, this is probably not the right time to try fasting. Speak with your coach and your doctors um, first about that one. And again, listen to your body. That is so important. What liquids are you allowed to consume? Right, this depends if you're on a time-restricted fast and you're in a no eating hours. It's best to stick to no or low calorie drinks like water, coffee without any milk and sugar, obviously, and tea. If you're on an alternate day diet or something similar, even during low calorie hours, you can technically drink whatever you'd like. But remember, this will count against your calories. Would you rather spend 100 calories um, on fruit or a glass of milk? It's your call. Um, but I do definitely recommend abstaining from alcohol during any fasting, well, any diet really, to be honest. Now, this brings us back to, can I exercise while fasting? Generally, um, you can exercise while fasting. You might even find that on time-restricted eating, you actually feel more energetic in the mornings t- um, to get your workout in. I mean, we found while we were in co- ketosis, you do you do get this like burst of energy. You're more energetic. Oh, I just need to apologise now. My dog is rolling around on the floor on his back, making some strange noises. So if you can hear any funny breathing going on, it's not me or something dodgy going on. It's my dog. Right. Anyway, so let's get back to this fasting. On more restrictive fasts, however, your low calorie diet days, sorry, um, might leave you feeling a bit sluggish. If that's the case, you might consider squeezing a gentle yoga session or just going for a gentle walk. Um, but, you know, check in with yourself. You can always scale back up um, depending on how you're feeling. So just take it steady to start with. Seven benefits of fasting. This is what I found out. Number one, fasting is an excellent tool for weight loss. There have been studies that support fasting as an excellent tool for weight loss. There was a study in um, 2015 that found that alternate day fasting trimmed body weight by up to 7% and slashed body fat by up to 12 pounds. Another study, um, which was done by the University of Southern California, discovered that when 71 adults were placed on a five-day diet, sorry, a five-day fast, eating between 750 and 1,100 calories a day, once every three months, they lost an average of six pounds, reduced inflammation levels and their waistlines and total body fat um, without sacrificing muscle tone, or mus- muscle mass, should I say. If you wanna lose weight and lose belly fat, fasting, even irregularly, could be the key. So if you find that you can't do it every day, then perhaps if you set aside one week every month or you know a few days um even that would have a little bit of benefit to you number two fasting promotes the secretion of human growth hormone um so human growth hormone or hgh um as it's also known is naturally produced by the body um but remains active in the bloodstream for just a few minutes it's been effectively used to treat obesity and help build muscle mass important for burning fat HGH also helps increase muscle strength, which can help improve your workouts too. So combine these together and you have an effective fat burning machine on your hands. So this is powerful stuff, guys. I want to be an effective fat burning machine. I know that. Number three. um, Now fasting, they say, may be good for athletes. Now I'm no way near an athlete, but I'm sure there's a few out there that um, follow my website. But fasting has been found to have positive effects on body mass as well as other health markers in professional athletes. And um, this is because, as previously mentioned, fasting can effectively shed excess fat, but at the same time optimising muscle growth because of the HGH production. So traditionally, athletes were advised to consume high quality protein half an hour after finishing their workouts. 
which is called post-workout nutrition, um, to simultaneously build muscle and reduce fat. Uh, fasting is advised for training days while eating is encouraged on the game days. So number four, fasting is great for normalizing insulin sensitivity. Now, this is something we found out on the fast fix. So we were trying to re reverse um, or put into remission type two diabetes, which we all did successfully. So, okay, so when your body gets too many carbs and sugar, it can become insulin resistant which often paves the way for a host of chronic diseases, including type 2 diabetes. Um, if you don't want to go down this route, it's critical to keep your body sensitive to insulin. Fasting is a really effective way to do this. There was a study published in the World Journal of Diabetes um, that found that intermittent fasting in adults with type 2 diabetes improved key markers for those individuals, including their body weight and glucose levels. As another study found that intermittent fasting was as effective as calorific restrictions in reducing visceral fat mass. Um, and we've talked about visceral fat, that's the fat that surrounds your organs. Fasting insulin and insulin resistance. So if you're struggling with pre-diabetes or insulin sensitivity, intermittent fasting can help to normalize things. Number five. Fasting, and I don't know how you pronounce this, fasting um, can norm normalize um ghrelin ghrelin levels i'm sure somebody will put me right on that one um what this is is actually known as the hunger hormone um, because it is responsible for telling your body that it's hungry dieting and really restrictive eating can actually increase the production of this which will leave you feeling hungrier but when you fast um though you might struggle in the first few days you're actually normalizing the levels of this eventually you won't feel hungry because it's your usual meal time um, so instead your body will become more adept in discerning when it is actually needing food number six fasting can lower triglyceride levels when you consume too much bad cholesterol these levels may shoot up increasing your risk of heart disease and we don't want that intermittent fasting actually lowers those bad cholesterol levels dec decreasing the triglycerides <laughs> right let's start this one again intermittent fasting actually lowers those bad cholesterol levels decreasing triglycerides <laughs> oh dear right this leads us to number six fasting can lower triglyceride levels when you consume too much bad cholesterol these levels may shoot up increasing your risk of heart disease and we don't want that do we intermittent fasting actually lowers those bad cholesterol levels decreasing them in the process so another interesting thing to note is that fasting doesn't affect the levels of the good cholesterol in the body so that's important and even more important ladies out there number seven fasting may slow down the aging process while not yet proven in humans, early studies in rats, which reminds me of being called a lab rat, won't go there again. Um, as I said, early studies in rats seem to link intermittent fasting with increased longevity. So one study found that intermittent fasting decreased body weight and increased the lifespan in rats. Um, another found that a group of mice who fasted intermittently actually lived longer than the control group, although they were heavier than the non-fasting mice. Of course, it's not clear that the same results would happen in humans, but the signs are encouraging. Now, precautions regarding fasting. So obviously, not everybody is um, suitable to do this. The health benefits of fasting are extremely appealing. I know that. But I do want to stress that fasting isn't always for everyone. People who suffer from hyperglycemia and diabetics... Um, should probably avoid fasting up until blood glucose and insulin levels have been normalised. Um, pregnant and breastfeeding women should definitely not fast um, and it can have negative effects on the baby, obviously. Additionally, if you are, if you are um, on certain medications or have other health conditions, please consult your doctor about introducing fasting into your lifestyle. However, for most of the population, intermittent fasting can be a really helpful tool in managing your weight and health. And um, as I say, I'm in remission now type 2. So if you're full on diabetic, type 1, do not do it. Type 2, talk to your doctor first. Final thoughts then. 
Um, again, it's not a way of depriving yourself of things. Fasting is a change in eating patterns. Instead of set meals and meal times, you'll have a window of eating. That is the way to look at it. There are many types of fasting. Intermittent fasting is the most common catch-all phrase and encompasses a few different types of fasting, as we've said, including the alternate day and the time-restricted eating, which is what I'm doing. Decide what type of fast you're doing, what you hope to get out of it, and stock in the fridge with the right foods that you'll eat um, will go a long way in a successful fast. The health benefits of fasting range from increased weight loss normalizing insulin sensitivity and possibly even slowing down the aging process so you can't complain at that can you while fasting is healthy for most people as i say if you're pregnant or breastfeeding you should not fast at all not in the slightest if you have diabetes um, or a serious medical condition or are taking prescription medication please just consult with your doctor first before embarking on a fast but everybody else absolutely fine next week i think i'm gonna kind of see how we're getting on with this for a week report back um find out how everyone else is getting on through the blog and everything um if you're new to the blog um you can find it by www.tracyward.me and it's tracy with an a i'd also like to talk about um ketosis a bit more and keto diets and how that speeds up fat losses. That is what's going to happen next week. So I hope this has um, given you something to think about. I hope that you want to give it a go, see how you get on. Those people that are struggling with staying to plan, you might find this just an extra tool that could um, help you do that, help you stick to plan, but also give you benefits at the same time. So that's even better. So get this app downloaded completely free. And just give it a go any questions just message me you know you're I'm always there and i'll get back to you as soon as i can so until next week give it a go stay focused and i'll catch you soon mm-hmm.